Good afternoon and welcome to another day of Q&A here at Joseph, the uh, concert that is happening very, very soon. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Adam Smith. Uh, we've been chatting to some great people this week. We've had Ria, we've had Darren Day, uh, Marlon, and of course, Andrew Gita as well. A big thank you to them all. Uh, Zoe will be chatting to us on Tuesday. Uh, she's got a role in this amazing Joseph concert as well. Uh, but today we have uh, a lady who has played the narrator in the London production with Lee Mead and Gareth Gates. Uh, she was the runner-up of Voice the Musical Theatre uh, 2005, uh, which was held in Cardiff. Uh, and the only actress to have played Meatloaf, Scaramouche and Killer Queen. So please welcome to our Q&A today, Jenna Lee James. Hello, Jenna. Are you there? Hi! Can't hear her. I'm here. No, not yet. No. We will get her. She will come <laughs> to the chat very, very soon. Uh, if you've been sending your questions in for Jenna, thank you so much. We're really grateful. I'll we'll be putting them to her. We've got plenty here. And you can keep your questions coming uh, in the comments below. Uh, just put them in there. Send a message to the Facebook page. Uh, get in touch and get your question through to Jenna today uh, about this amazing concert that's going to be happening very, very soon. Uh, Joseph and the amazing All Star concert. We're very, very excited for that. Uh, Can you hear just me? Just waiting for Jenna to come on. Carrie Lahira, can't see her. Uh, I think we're having some technical issues again, which is just, it's the norm, isn't it? All this week, it's what's been happening. Keeps me on my toes, keeps me awake, keeps me out of boredom. Uh, not to mention, Jenna as well has just finished touring the world uh, with Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and he's featured vocalist on his World Arena tour, The Man, The Music and The Show. Now, apparently I'm being told in my ear right now, the audience can see her and hear her, which is good, because I can't, <laughs> which ain't going to be good for asking questions, <laughs> is it? Unless we just leave a big gap. So, Interesting. hi, Jenna, if you can hi, see everybody. me. I can't hi, see Adam, you. Even you can't hear me. <laughs> I'm hoping this all gets fixed. Uh, we'll figure it out. On the last day that we do these Q&As, that'll be the day that it all works out, it all works fantastically. Uh, never enough. While we get our technical issues sorted, we're going to give you a little glimpse of what Jenna got up to on tour uh, with Hugh Jackman. This is a video of her singing the song from The Greatest Showman, This Is Never Enough. Musical Arnie. En binnenkort schittert ze in de musical Cats, die ook hier in Nederland te zien zal zijn. Geef haar een groot applaus. Hier is Jenna Lee James. Trying to hold my breath that it stay this way. Can't let this moment end. You set up a dream in me, getting loud enough. Can you? Right, we're back. So fingers crossed we have technology that works now. I know a lot of people are sweating and panicking, uh, doing all this stuff technical-wise. So if you are just joining us, uh, uh, missed nothing, just me chatting and uh, not being able to see anything on the screen. It's still not. So fingers crossed this works as we bring in Jenna Lee James to this Q&A. Yes! Hi, Hi Jenna! Have you got I can, me? You. I can hear you and I can Amazing. see you. Were you literally talking to yourself whilst I was just blabbering I up? Was I was talking to everybody at home. They could all see and hear me. I was like, oh. in just you couldn't. You were, you know. All right, yeah, just leave me room. out. I get it. I get oh, it, no, being left out. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon, Jenna. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? I'm very, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know myself and all these people uh, that are on this right now are very excited for this amazing concert that's happening very soon. What about you? You excited? I can't wait. It's, so, it's been so long since I sung any Joseph songs. So it was just, it's like so exciting to hear it all again and see it. I love Joseph. I mean, who yeah. doesn't? It's just, you know, it's been around for years and the music is just so fantastic. And the cast is phenomenal. So yeah. everybody's in for a real treat. It's something really special. And I, I can't wait. Can't wait. I know it's everyone's special. so excited, including myself. And I only heard about this a week ago. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bit up for it. Now, 
I believe you're taking a bit. Of t- I know you're taking time off right now, but we were saying before this Suddenly is the now. first time you've literally had time to kind of just be at home with your dog. Uh, you know, you've been touring. Oh, it's oh, you've been what? What's he called? Arthur. Arthur. You've been touring the world. Hugh Jackman, Brendan. Yeah. You've been doing it all. So it's nice to have a break. Yeah. I imagine. Do you know what? It's it is really nice. I know we're in these unprecedented unprecedented times and stuff, and we are stuck at home. And you know, but I think. For me, I think we just need to embrace it. I think in this day and age, it's always we're always so busy. We don't stop working. We don't stop. We're just bustling around all the time. And we never really take time out. And I think for me, the word that I keep using is it's just a massive reset. I think we just need to reset our lives a little bit, chill out a bit, take time for family, call your friends, call your family. You know, the whole this whole thing, you know, Zoom and and video conferencing and talking to people online, just reconnect with people and just, you know, take your surroundings in. And I know that everybody's kind of panicking about what's ahead, but you know what, this is never going to happen again, hopefully. Fingers crossed. You know, (laughs) in a year's time, we're all going to sit and have a a drink in a bar somewhere and we're all going to laugh about it and go, do you remember the time we're all stuck at home and we couldn't leave, you know, but I think it's just reset and just chill, you know, and watch Netflix. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. We've, we've been ex- exchanging recommendations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Let's get straight into the questions then. Uh, all the people this week have been put under pressure. Uh, you're no different. We've got some quality ones for you here. Uh, are you ready to go into them? Go. Take a deep breath. Should we do this? Hit me with it. Let's go. Uh, Graham Taylor is the first question. Uh, Hello, who is your favourite actor to play Joseph of all time? And which ones did you work with? It's a bit of a difficult one because I think everybody has a real different take on Joseph as their Joseph, same with any character. Um, I got to work with Lee Mead, first of all, and then Gareth Gates, and I had a fantastic time with both of them. But I think um, Donny Osman. Come on. Donny Osman. Yeah. Back, you know, way, way back many centuries ago. Donny Osman. It's got to be, hasn't it? Good choice. I like that. And well, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, obviously Osmond, when, you know, when you become part like of a family, when you're yeah. touring and doing it, you just assume that you're gonna you're gonna be I biased. Love and choose them. I don't, if Lee and Gareth are watching, I love you both dearly. I really, really do. But you know, Johnny, he's cute. Come on. He's a legend as well. He's Absolute a legend. legend. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Doolan, uh, thank you so much for taking part in uh, this for us. How does it feel for you to sing these incredible songs from Joseph again and relive your Joseph memories? Do you know what? When I get asked to do this, I was buzzing, absolutely buzzing. So when I, little secret, when I first um, got the role as narrator in Joseph, I'd never seen the show. I never saw the production at school because we didn't do it at school. Um, so I literally, on before my last audition, I went to see the production in town um, and kind of loved it. And so to re-sing the songs, it brings back so many memories for me in so many ways because our Joseph family that we had at the time is still a close-knit family and we still we've got a little you know whatsapp group and we still chat and there's quiz night every week and stuff um and um it's just to re-sing those songs because it's such a fantastic thing it's probably one of the best sings I've ever had in a show as narrator because it goes from you know down there up to there yeah. and just, you can just let rip and really get into the story in certain aspects so it's yeah it's just been fantastic to do it again Okay, that was uh, Jordan's question. And this next one, we've asked everyone this, uh, but Kelly Crichton wants to get this straight in right now. Can you still remember all those colours in order, not meaning to put you on the spot? Do you mean you want me to sing them? I mean, go on. Why not? Okay, this is a test. Red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and lilac and gold and chocolate and mauve and cream and crimson and silver and rose and azure and lemon and russet and grey and purple and white and pink and orange and blue. Come on. I'm just waiting to find out if you got it right. Please you did. Right. Well Thank done. You. You're the third person. Darren stopped halfway through. We didn't ask Ria because we didn't want to scare her because technology weren't her best thing. Uh, but Andrew got it right and Marlon got it right. And now you, so you've, you've added you to the list. you forget them. When you sing them, you never, you kind of don't forget them. I don't know, do you? Would you say it's They're like riding the bike? Yeah. Would it say what? Like it's riding like riding the bike. bike once you've done it. That's it, it's with you. Kind of, yeah. I rode a bike again for the first time about 15 years the other day. And, I mean, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about that later on, shall we? <laughs> Uh, Hayley Bordak, <laughs> who would you like to sing a duet with and what song? <gasps> Ooh, who would I like to sing a duet with? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Uh, many years ago when um, I was growing up, I, I was a massive Wet 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 fan. And so I always wanted to sing with Marty Pello. Right. And I did message him the other day. It's a Marty, if you're watching or if anybody knows, I did message you about doing a little something, but he never got back to me. But Marty Pello, I guess, because he's from my hometown as well. He is from Clybank in Scotland. And, you know... Apart from that, maybe Gary Barlow? 
Yeah, well, he's doing it with a lot of people right now. So is Matt Lucas. I know yeah, Rhea's jumping on with Matt Lucas. So maybe you could yeah, do a bit of potato. Gary, Gary's tried to call me a couple of times, but I keep going, Gary, stop it. Just yeah. come on, come You're on. harassing me now. Have a yeah, word. Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Hugh Jackman and Gary Barlow. I like the theme we're going with here. Yeah. Uh, Graham Taylor, who uh, is your favourite? Oh, no, we've just done that one. Excuse me. Yep. Uh, Phil Aldershaw, how long does it take during rehearsals to really get comfortable uh, with the part and the character? And also, how many live performances following launch does it take to click and say, I am this character? Um, that's a bit of, that's a, uh, two questions in there. And it's a bit of a weird one, because I think during rehearsals, you, you find your character, you work in different ways, and you really have to find your character, especially if somebody else has played it before. You can never do their take on it. You have to find your character within it and yeah. how you would portray it. And for me, it's about the honesty of it. And I think if you're just honest in any role you play, then the character comes through. And it probably takes, I don't know, a real good week of just heading to the first week you find your character, then you find tweak things. And I think performance wise, you never really finalize that character because for me, she's always growing every day and I find new things every day. And I think that's the excitement of the show and keeping shows going is you find yeah. something new and you go, oh, she would do that or would she do that? And I think as long as you believe in the character, Whatever you do on stage, it's not wrong. Everything is right, as long as you believe. It's about finding it in here. Um, so, but yeah, I'm always learning with them every day. Yeah. Guess it's something fresh as well for audiences who yeah. come to see it and they want to see it again and they want to see a different take. And they just want a different, even though it's the same show, different yeah. elements to it every yeah. time. Yeah, and I know that people start to believe that you actually are that character. So they start calling you by the character name rather than your own name, you know, as well, which is sometimes a bit weird. You go, oh, no, you know. <laughs> Uh, thank you for that question, Phil. Joshua Piper, he, he says, I'm two years out of college and I've done ships and pantos so far. Uh, I've never had to do one show for longer than a month. How do you keep yourself excited and motivated when doing a West End run or tour where you're doing the same stuff day in, day out for several months and years? I think keep it fresh yourself. So don't get stuck into a rut of um, a lot of people will go, this is exactly how I sing this every day. And I take a breath there and I do it like this and it's regimented. And I think find those little tweaks, not deviating too much, but find those little things. And also audiences are different every single day. Um, and it's the audience that will give you that buzz and the audience that you'll find something new in and something inspiring. I mean, I did We Will Rock You in town for five and a half years. And I can honestly say hand on heart, there wasn't one day I went into work and actually I didn't even feel like it was work. I felt like I was going in to visit my family every day. Yeah. Um, but I found something new every day and I was inspired every single day by somebody in the audience or something or you connect with somebody. Um, so I don't think you ever get bored. And I've always said the day I get bored with it is the day I give up. Yeah. So I've never I always find something and it's exciting. It's live. You know, who knows what can happen when it's live? Exactly. And that yeah. goes perfectly on to my next question. What's your most embarrassing stage moment? Oh, gosh. Um, a lot of people take a while to come up with this answer, so I'm feeling okay. there's a lot. Uh, mm, embarrassing. Okay, it wasn't exactly on stage, but it was when I was doing um, We Will Rock You. Um, and then I'll tell you a Joseph one. So one I did with We Will Rock You wasn't exactly on, on stage, but it was I, we were doing a, a promo concert afterwards at the Grosvenor House. And it was a little charity thing. And I was on stage and my Scaramouche costume at the time used to be like this bra with a corset and it clipped at the front. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with this? I do, yep. And that little clip decided to come undone, you know, and I had to run off stage. Um, but I had one in Joseph where I had just finished singing Ferris Story at the front of the stage. It's like this big number. And I turn around to go upstairs and I go to walk up Ferris stairs and I'm there and I start to walk and I'm mincing up the stairs and I suddenly thought, oh, I'm hobbling a little bit. And as I turned around, I saw my four-inch stiletto still sitting at the front of the stage on the, you know, the yellow carpet. And I had to run back down and grab the shoe and then ran back upstairs. And instead of putting the shoe on, I decided to sit and hold it like a microphone and sing into it. Unique. It's your own style. You know, work with it. That was it. <laughs> like it. Both brilliant. Uh, Sarah, Lou uh, Sarah Louise McEnvoy, how did you get involved with this concert cast? Um, it kind of came about um, through um, Ad uh, Adam Lacey and also uh, my friend Zoe Tyler. Zoe and I have known each other for many, many years. Um, and it was just putting together the whole production. And um, I basically just got approached and said, would you like to be part of it? And I said, oh, I'm a little bit busy at the moment, you know, just traveling around the world in my living yeah. room. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> which <laughs> room next? And as soon as somebody mentioned Joseph, I was like, absolutely, I want to sing those songs again. Um, and that was it. Just basically got approached to do it. And, you know, I'm so thrilled and so excited to see the final result because I've not even seen it yet. So, um, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, we're very excited as well. Now, uh, we can't go uh, not talking about this. Ian Henderson, uh, what was it like to work with Hugh Jackman? Uh, and will you be doing any more live shows with him? Hugh Jackman is just the most incredible man on the planet. Um, apart from you, obviously, Adam. But um, he's just, he's a dream to work with. He's a, he inspires you every single day. He's a gentleman. He's so hardworking, but he's so genuine and honest. And he's, I can call him my friend. You know, he is my friend. We've had a few Zoom calls while we've been on lockdown as well. And he is just so caring. Um, the most generous performer on stage as well. You know, he wants everybody to have their moment. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel very, very privileged that I got to do that. And all I can say, at the moment, Hugh was about to open in Music Man this year, so fingers crossed that still happens on Broadway. But next year, watch the space, you never know. Oh, no, not even a little bit of an exclusive. Can no, we get out of there's nothing, nothing uh, official. Right. Nothing official, but who knows? Who knows, you know? Now, we saw the video of you while we had technical issues of you singing Never Enough, which is such an iconic song from an iconic soundtrack. Um, before working with Hugh, did you, had you seen The Greatest Showman? Did you have a favourite song prior to that? Um, I had seen The Greatest Showman. Um, I think it's such an inspiring movie uh, for many different reasons. Um, and I loved the movie. And then to actually get to work with him was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to work with The Greatest Showman. You know, and Wolverine. He's Wolverine. I know, right? Yeah. Um, but... Um, uh, my, I guess the few different favourite songs. I do love singing Never Enough, um, but also uh, This Is Me. That's I the think, song, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's a song that we kind of all connect with because we are all individuals in this world. Um, and I think with society, and especially as performers, we, we always try harder to be accepted in every way. And it's like, you know, you go to an audition and you're like, please like me and please want me. And... And it's that thing of we get so much rejection in our lives and we try, we do try. And I know for me growing up, I always tried to be something better in somebody else. And, one, and then I think you suddenly learn that, do you know what? It's OK to just be you because this is who we are. We are individuals. And if there was two of the same people in the world, it'd be really, really boring. Yeah. You know, so I think just be yourself, you know, open your heart, be honest, be true and just... You know, if you're a singer, a dancer, any performer in the business, you know, whether you work on stage, backstage, no matter what business you're in, be you, be true to yourself and just bloody enjoy life. Like, yeah. just go out there, put a smile on your face, even now in these times. Yeah. Put a smile on your face, think positive and just think, yeah, I'm here, I'm healthy, I'm happy. And do you know what? I've got my whole life ahead of me. I definitely think that with society being more accepting now than it has been over previous years, the, the, the song is the anthem. It's the one yeah. that... Everyone, no matter who you are, where you're from, what industry, you can, anybody can relate to that song. Yeah. And I, think that's, I think we'll make it stand definitely the test of time. Yeah. And you get to sing it, not like us on karaoke. You get to actually sing it. I do get to sing it, yeah. You're yeah. lucky sod. You're lucky sod, you. <laughs> uh, right, Willis George Olsen, what's the best advice you'd give to actors who find you inspiring during a time where many young people want to perform? Want to perform? I think it, it's it's hard at the moment and I know you know especially people who are established in the business as well are finding it you know very difficult and getting a little bit down and you know and I feel for all the kids who are literally at college and are just about to you know who are just about to graduate this year and come out and and they've you know they've worked so hard I think don't get too disheartened right now we're all in the same boat but I would say stay focused keep performing in your lounge you know keep singing in the shower, do all of those things, keep dancing, keep doing your workouts every day and just know that we will get out of this. And when we do, the one thing people are really going to want is not to sit at home on a Saturday night watching Netflix and getting a takeaway. People are going to want live entertainment. So keep going because before they know it, the jobs are going to be, there's going to be so many of them. They're going to be crying out for performers and entertainers and just keep going. Don't give up. The moment you give up, then that's it. And it's, it's, it's such a waste because you see so many talented people who just go, oh, I'm not getting that job. It took me five years of auditioning before I got my first West End job. So honestly, keep going, keep focused and just keep performing, keep singing. Keep going. That's great keep advice. Going. Thank you very much, Jenna. Yeah. Uh, Paul Tabram, uh, what other character would you like to play in a show that you have not already done already? Like, what's your dream role? 
My dream role, um, a lot of people think it's something else. And in fact, I had this conversation with my parents the other day who I think are watching and they got it wrong. My dream role is actually Ava Perron. Wow. In Vita. Yeah, a lot of people think, yeah, a lot of people think it's Elphaberg because they're like, oh, you want to go and bell? And I'm like, no, I want to go and do something really true and sincere and honest who gets just a great sing. I love just having that real, I love testing my voice. And I love doing the extremes of keeping that really intimate and quiet, but delivering a story and moving people, but also then really letting rip as well. So Ava Perron's the one. I want to stand on a balcony and do that. And go, la. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wave to your subjects. Yeah. Uh, Paul Williamson, what is your favourite Queen song? Oh, my gosh. My favourite Queen song. Ah! Um, to sing or, or to hear? Either. Either. Both. Um, Okay, my favourite Queen song to sing has to be Somebody to Love. It was the first song I ever got to sing on a West End stage. Um... Oh, we've lost her. Technology again. Uh, we're chatting to Jenna Lee James right now about the upcoming performance of her uh, in the Joseph uh, All-Star Amazing cast. Uh, loads of questions coming in. We're halfway through them. Uh, just until losing it right there. We've had some good ones. We've got some silly ones to come. We've talked about Hugh Jackman uh, and how performing with him, what he's like to work with, uh, what was her favourite song from The Great Show. We've, we've covered most things, more still to come. If you've just joined us and missed half the interview and the Q&As, don't worry. The whole video will be available online uh, to watch, just like the other ones from Rhea, Darren, Andrew and Marlon, uh, all this week and going forward to have a go on, uh, have a watch and find out if they answered any of your questions. Uh, we are chatting to Zoe Tyler on Tuesday uh, after the bank holiday weekend. I know it's a bank holiday. You wouldn't think it, would you? Uh, so if you've got any questions for Zoe, please get them in. You can comment uh, on any of the Facebook posts. Alternatively, send a message through that way and we would love to get your questions through to Zoe uh, on Tuesday. Now, I'll just say they're trying to bring Jenna back into the, the thing right now. Uh, hopefully, we'll get her back and we'll be able to ask the rest of the questions. There we are. Welcome back, Jenna. Thank you, technology. Don't know what happened. So sorry about that. I'm getting used to it now. The day that this happens when nothing goes wrong, it'll be like a miracle. It'll be when the lockdown ends. <laughs> it's, sorry about that. It's fine. So we're talking about your favourite Queen song now. Somebody to Love, you said, was your favourite yeah, one. Yeah, it was the first one that I ever got to perform on a West End stage. Um, and it kind of, it's the one that I now love. Sing. It's one of those, it's in my veins. It's just, you just kind of sing it and let rip. And, and I've sung it now for many, many years. In fact, I put it on my, um, recorded it on my album recently as well. Um, but I think my all time favorite Queen song would have to be uh, Love of My Life. It's yeah, just, it's, it's not a that well known one, is it? But it's still a, a no, great song. That, yeah, it's just so beautiful um, and intimate. And there's another one I just want to point it out for people to listen to. There's a song that, um, Freddie's song called This Is The World We Created. Um, and we've just released it on a um, Champions of Rock album recently as a live, just a live performance. They only ever did it live. I don't think Freddie recorded it. But just going after this, go and Google it and listen to it because it's so apt with the world where we are right now. Just have a little listen to it. You might have a little cry, but it's called This Is The World We Created. Just listen to it by Queen. Fantastic. I'm sure the people in the technical team will put it on, uh, on our Facebook for people to see as well. Uh, Daniel Stelling. What was your favourite moment of performing in We Will Rock You? Besides, oh the charity, besides the charity event that we spoke about. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, oh, gosh. I, do you know what? It changed my life, that show. It really, really did. And I ha I did so, we had so many amazing things. We performed in the Queen's Back Garden. Uh, we performed at Party at the Park. We performed with um, various superstars. Um, Phil Collins was our drummer at one point. Um, there was many, many things. Um, I don't know. Maybe... Uh, probably the very first time that we ever had Brian and Roger perform on stage because the audience were not expecting it and we were in Bohemian Rhapsody and the trap at the front of the stage opens and Brian, as all this smoke came out, suddenly Brian just came out with you know, wow. the special and he played and then it gets to the middle section with the head banging and suddenly our entire tube station, um, Tottenham Court Road tube station, which comes out of the stage, came up and Roger was there playing his drums and I, I mean, I cry now thinking about it, but to see... The audience literally were just, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. To see one, Brian May on stage, yeah. and Roger Taylor was, you know, huge. And that was before they were back touring again. It was before they'd gone back out with Paul Rogers. So for them to perform again was massive. And that was, that was when I went, oh my gosh, I'm actually performing with Queen. That was like a big thing. So probably that, that moment there. I, see, I mean, it'd be hard to top that, wouldn't it? I guess yeah. that's... Yeah. Uh, now you're talking about your album. 
Yeah. Uh, tell us more about it. How has it come about? Tell us so, about um, it. So I recorded a little album. There is. Is that One The Edge? It's called On The, on edge. the edge. On The Edge, sorry. Um, and it's available at CD via my website. So you get some nice pictures of a nice man on the back and things like that as well for all the ladies out there and the men. Um, it kind of came about, I've been in chats doing it um, with a good friend of mine, Chris Egan, um, for quite a few years. And we'd spoken about, should we do it? And just for us, because I was like, who's going to buy my album? Was, you know. Um, and uh, he was like, why don't we just do it and go and have some fun? So we spoke about it and I funded the entire thing myself, but I wanted it to be an honest interpretation of me and who I am um, and feature songs, not musical theatre songs, but songs that represent me as a person, as a performer, and kind of tell a little bit of a story of my life, really. Um, so when you listen to every song, every song on there has a reason to one there. Like I've got a Scottish folk song on there called Caledonia, which is because I'm from Scotland originally, yeah. and it's, it's, it's called the homesick song because I'm forever away from home. And the one place I always feel safe is when I do go home to Scotland, um, I always feel like I can breathe again because it's so bustling and busy in London, you know, yeah. and, and that's, my, that's my safe place. I think we all have a safe place and, you know, Scotland is mine. But there's just different songs on there. And then I, I did a duet with Louise Dearman on there. So we've got Tell Him as our duet. And Peter Johansson, who was my Galileo in town, Peter and I worked, with, worked together a lot, um, doing other things, Champions Rock. Um, and we decided not to do a Queen song, because that's what we're known for. But we decided to do um, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Great song. Um, because we have this working relationship, Peter and I, where he calls me work wife and I call him work husband. Um, and it's just one of the same. Peter's married and, you know, but it's all fine. Even, you know, Lydia, his wife, will message me and she'll say, hey, work wife, how are you? Um, it's just one of those things. But we have such a really good bond and friendship that Bridge Over Troubled Water kind of summed up who we are, that we're always there for each other. So it's kind of, it's something I just wanted to reach out in a way of it just being honest. Um, I recorded at Abbey Road Studio um, just with five musicians on there, no orchestra, no fake strings, everything you hear is live. Um, and I just had the most amazing time recording it. And it's something I'm just kind of proud of, really, um, that I did. But there's just some special tracks on there. And the bonus track is Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which is a song that means a lot to me um, in many ways, because I went through, many of you will be able to relate, I went through um, kind of a hard time about 10, 11 years ago. Um, and I actually couldn't, felt like I couldn't sing anymore I kind of lost my passion for it and it was just I was having some personal um problems and couldn't sing and I remember trying to sing some like high notes and I was like I can't mm -hmm. get them out and it's just not happening and shall I change the keys and and um I was driving along and I this song came on the radio and it was Eva Cassidy's Summer of the Rainbow and I had to stop the car because I just bawled my eyes out and I got home and I sung the song and it found me my voice again so it's a real it has a real meaning on the album and it's just myself and Chris playing piano and it's so beautiful so if you do get a chance to listen to it have a little listen even just to that track um and you'll know what I mean when you hear it it's just it's got passion in it. and for anybody that's struggling especially right now there is hope out there for all of us there really really is yeah. we're going to be back out there before you know it don't give up just keep going really yeah. keep going. stay strong beautiful song beautiful song now we're going to take a little clip uh look at a little clip of your album so yeah. Enjoy. I am an artist. I won't crawl. I'll paint a picture of my heart and have. There we go. Welcome back, Jenna. Beautiful album. Thank you. Now, you said before that you wanted to achieve, you know, to, to get across your life and some tales. Do you think you achieved that in the album? 
Um, I, I like to think so. Yes. Um, I know that I've had I've had some amazing feedback from many different people around the world. Um, people listening to it saying it's basically it's not what they expected, which is why the cover is what the cover is as well. It's like completely, yeah. you know. Um, it, it was to be a little bit unique and and just something a little bit different that people go, oh, what what is this? And to intrigue people. And I think it does tell every, there, there's a few moments on there where I cry, there's imperfections in my vocal, but I wanted to keep it live and I wanted to keep it raw and I wanted it to be real that people could really connect with it um, in many ways. And I think, I hope that when people listen to it, that is what they feel and how they connect rather than just listening to another voice sing, you know, another album. And also it's not just about me, it's about the boys in the band as well who are just the most incredible players, you yeah. know, um, as well. So it, it's... It's about them as well. It was a group piece, basically, when we put it together. So I hope that when people listen to it, they can kind of connect in some way. And, and if they do, then I did my job. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, I know after hearing it uh, and hearing you speak about it and seeing the cover, a lot of people want to get hold of that album right now. How do they get it? Um, if they want an actual CD, this one, go onto my website um, and you can basically buy the CD direct on there and then I'll send it in a little cheapy bag and I'll post it out and you might get a little picture with it as well. Um, you can download it on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. Um, it's on all medias as well. So you can find it out there anywhere you want to find it. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenna. Right. We've been very serious. Let's have a little bit of fun now. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Udden, uh, when eating a jacket potato with beans, cheese <laughs> on first or after? Oh my gosh, cheese first. You've got to melt it. Really? Yeah, melt it, then beans on top. Fair enough. I like the cheese melted in the potato, then you can mash it through and then you mash your beans in. Would you not double cheese it? Would you not put cheese in first, then the beans, then you more cheese on top? could, if you wanted to put a bit of mozzarella in first and then a bit of cheddar on top. Then yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> Adam Lacey has just said he's doing live streams and doing duets with Darren and Rhea uh, and played Peron in Evita. Would you consider doing a duet with him? Bit of self-plugging there from Adam, I can see. Uh, would I consider doing a duet? Of course. Yeah. Absolutely, but he's never asked me. Is he asking well, me now? I guess so. <laughs> there you go. We'll get yeah. it arranged. I'd love to see that. Yeah, of course. Brill. Derek Allen, uh, you play some really big arenas, uh, you know, throughout Hugh Jackman and Torin with, uh, you know, many productions. What would you say is the difference between performing there and in a theatre, an arena um, in a theatre? I think a theatre... Um, so arenas are such, I mean, there's such vast spaces and we, we performed to like 20,000 people um, when we were on tour last year. Um, and I'm also doing a Queen Symphonic tour, hopefully at the end of this year. It was meant to happen. Fingers now. crossed. Um, and we performed to about 10,000 in those. Um, I think theatre has got that real traditional vibe about it where you go into a theatre, you sit down in your theatre seat and you've got you know, your boxes around you and all of that. And it's a real intimate kind of moment. Whereas the arena has got that vast open space to carry. So one, it's about you have to carry yourself and make yourself a little bit larger than life without going caricature. Um, and the theatre can be that more intimate, honest um, approach to connect with an audience in a, just a very, very different way. Um, the difference with Hughes tour last year was we did a lot of theatre stuff but in an arena because um, I sung I Dreamed a Dream from Les yeah. Mis. Um, and connecting with that, I mean, I was on huge, you know, um, 20 foot screens as well but um you still have to connect and be honest but just in a different way um and I love both I do love that. I love that arena grittiness and getting down to it with an audience you know yeah. a huge audience but that the intimate theater is just beautiful and actually my personal favorite is that intimate tiny 100 seat um where you're literally you can see the person sat in front of you because it's the hardest performance you will ever do and if you can do that then you can do anything I say because I guess there. if you do, yeah, I guess if you're doing a, a smaller audience, the feedback's immediate, isn't it? You can tell on their face yeah. whether they are enjoying it or not. So yeah. that's precious. That's delivery. And you can see the amount of people that go to the toilet before the interval. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever felt like telling them, going, uh, come on, can you wait five minutes? Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> when you're ready. Uh, Derek Allen, how does it feel to be the only performer to have played all three leads in We Will Rock You? Uh, and how were they vocally different? Oh gosh, they were, they were very vocally different. Um, so one, it was incredible to get to play all three. That's kind of like a bucket list dream, really. Um, my first, the first role I got to perform, I covered Scaramouche initially, um, and then I covered both Meatloaf and Scaramouche. Then I actually took over the role of Meatloaf, took over the role of Scaramouche, and then I went back for the 10th anniversary arena tour and played Killer Queen. And by that point, 
you know, I was a few years older, so I wasn't yeah. a kid anymore. I was more the grown up. But each role was very different. Meatloaf was that gritty, vibey, you know, raunchy rock chick. Scaramouche was that kind of um, naive little uh, quirky goth girl, very um, inward, um, but with this huge voice of you know, giving something. And then Killer Queen is just the queen of the world. Um, vocally, they were all very taxing because I had to place the songs in different places in my voice. Yeah. Um, and I did have a few instances where the first half of the show, I would play Meatloaf and the second half, I would play Scaramouche because the lead had gone off. And that, to readjust your voice mid-show because of where they sit was very difficult. Meatloaf is yeah. very an open belt. Scaramouche has got that more mixy sound. Um, and then, you know, obviously when I want to play Killer Queen, she's that full raw kiss gravelly yeah. so they were very very different vocally to play and had i if i had to sing them now all three together as i did in the show i mean i don't think my vocal cords would get through it but you know you you kind of had i would have to sing them in a very different way i guess now because they're just so different but i loved every single character and i just i couldn't choose my favorite out of them either they were such fun to play brilliant and now they were having a quiz last night here on the joseph page uh with robbie and laura uh, one of the questions were, how many colours are in the coat? Now, you sang it. Can you tell me how many? This is where I wait for an answer again. How I long do it. I get? How long do you want? I'll give you, give you 30 seconds. Go. She's 29. Singing it. 29. Is that your final answer? Is that right? Or is it 24? I, I don't know. I'm waiting for the answer. 29? I do, the no one's telling. 29. Yeah, well done. Perfect. That's odd, isn't it? 29 colours. That's weird. I don't know. You'd think they'd round it off, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Paxson, uh, have you ever kept or taken any costumes or props from the show? And mm. if you did, I don't think you'd tell us anyway. <laughs> uh, for, uh, yes. You get, but you get given things at the end of shows as well because there's certain things that you can't. Um, I came home from... <laughs> I came home from the um, Hugh Jackman tour uh, with an extra 16 pairs of shoes. Okay. Were they yours? And they were all mine. And being a, bit of a, being a bit of a, all heels, being a bit of a shoe freak. Um, and in fact, I've actually just rebuilt my shoe cupboard yesterday. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I came home with 16 pairs of shoes from that and a few little bits of costume. From We Were Rock You, I have my Scaramouche wig because um, I had two. So I have a Scaramouche wig. I've got my meatloaf corset, my meatloaf shorts. They will not be getting worn again in my lifetime because they wasn't, they're not about that big. Um, <laughs> so I've got a few different things. Joseph, I've got my amazing narrator skirt, my pencil skirt. If anybody saw me do the show, I loved that skirt. It was falling to pieces, but I still have it because it was Dolce & Gabbana. So I was like, I want that skirt. Yeah, yeah. And they gave it to me. It's very nice. Well, so I've got fun. a few things from different shows, yeah. Memories. Memories, yeah. Love it. Uh, uh, Amanda Claire Jones, uh, she's a member of the concert cast. Uh, Hi, Amanda. Which, Hi, Amanda. Uh, which show section is your favourite to sing from the show? <gasps> uh, I've got two points I love singing in the show. Uh, one is Potiphar, when the narrator sings, Letting out a mighty roar. That's it. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's comedy value. Um, and Fairer Story. That's my favourite. Fair story. It's just to the kids, singing that story to the kids every night was just great. Opening of the second half. I loved it. I look forward Good to choice. that. You know. Good choice. Another cast member from Joseph has commented as well. This is Charlotte now, Charlotte Hall. Do you have a pre-show ritual that you like to stick to? And if so, what is it? I was giving away all my secrets. Um, so uh, I do many things. So I do, I go into work. I'll always grab a coffee on the way into work. Um, just one of those things that's a ritual whether I drink it or not is another thing but I always get a coffee it might just sit on the side and be full by the end of the day but I always spend you know that money um, I will also have a coffee then I'll go to warm up so I'll do physical and vocal warm up I'll come back to my dressing room um, I will then get ready makeup hair's last thing and then before I go, and I'll do another little vocal warm up myself um, before I go on stage I will always put my lipstick on twice so I'll always right. get ready and then right before I leave in the dressing room, I always have to put it on again. Random, I know. And I will always take with me two Orbis pastels. So I sing a little secret. Anybody who watches me, no matter where I am and no matter what I'm doing, concert-wise around the world, I will always sing with an Orbis pastel under my tongue. Next time you perform, there might have people check in. If, I, so if you, suddenly you get hit with something in the audience, you'll be like, oh, what's that? James? Yeah, I always sing with that, Orbis pastel. That's what she spoke about in the yeah, Q&A. We didn't it, think it go. was wet, but yeah. <laughs> 
Um, John Courtney. Now, he was the golden buzzer on Hello, Talent John. from Ant and Deck. Uh, a lot of musical performers are not comfortable performing as themselves in a cabaret situation. Right. Having seen you perform your one-woman show on stage, which was absolutely incredible, he said, by the way, uh, do you prefer to perform as you or as a character in an ensemble? Also, my wife would like Hugh Jackman's phone number, please. <laughs> John, you're not getting it. Told you, it's for, he's asking for his wife. It's not for him, actually. He wants it. <laughs> uh, um, it's. Um, do you know what? I love. I love performing characters. You get to perform some really amazing roles, and I think with characters you get to hide. And I think this is the thing with performers is everybody thinks that performers are, are like real extroverts. They're not. A lot of us are really kind of inhibited and shy and quiet. Yeah. Um, and so it's a really difficult task to then get a performer who's so used to being in a costume and wig and makeup and all that to then be themselves and deliver a song because they just they they just feel they can't do it it's that yeah. honesty of just releasing yourself and it goes back to what we were saying before about you know the whole confidence thing just be yourself yeah. like don't, you know this is me think of it this is this is who i am um and i love doing my own thing as well i love being free to just express myself open my heart and you know there's been various times where I've been singing a song and I've cried and I've choked up and I've had to get it back together but I think that's that's the fun in performing it's the fun of being yeah. who you are and just you know tell a story let your body just relax and just do it I always remember my final audition for Joseph I always remember Nicholas Rohan saying to me um Jenna do me a favor take your shoes off take all your jewelry off and take your hair down and sing to me and it's a weird thing, especially as, as, as women, you know, mm. we put on that stiletto heel and we walk in and you've got tall and you feel like, you know, you've got your jewelry on, your rings and everything. And you feel like you're complete. It's like stripping your makeup off. As soon as you take all that off and you become you, it's very, very difficult to stand and sing. And it's that, it is that thing. If, if you can do that, then you can kind of do anything. It's just learn to be yourself and just open your heart. Don't be scared of what, I think too many of us are scared of what people think about us. Yeah. You know, and I've gone through that myself. You know, you think you see somebody in the audience and they're sat there doing this to you and you think, oh my God, they're hating me. And actually, no, they're thinking. Yeah. But we're so quick to judge people and, and what they're thinking all the time. It's like, don't, because you don't know what's happened in that person's day. You don't know what they're going through. They're probably absolutely loving you, but they're just listening. They've zoned into your voice or they're watching you dance or, you know, anything. So I think just be yourself, open your heart. And for me, performing as me, I love it because I love people getting to know me a bit better yeah. and getting to know me. You know, I'm not scared for people to get to know me. Yeah, I mean, I guess nobody can be perfect all the time. So when you're on stage and there is cracks in your voice and there is moments that aren't planned, it, I guess it shows you're human and that you're not yeah. an autopilot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've done some absolutely horrendous cracks and flat notes and things. You go, oh, God, and you stand and you beat yourself up about it. And then at the end of the show, the audience are on their feet and you go, and then you say, oh, God, that note I sung. And they go, what note? Yeah. Because people are focusing on your performance. And I think a great thing about that is for anybody who's, going, who's beating themselves up, the most amazing performance I have ever seen and ever heard is Judy Dench sing Send in the Clowns because she literally speaks the whole thing. She doesn't sing it, but my God, she feels every single note, every single word. And yeah. so that's the thing. If you can just connect and you're real, it doesn't matter if you crack, it doesn't matter if you fall in your face. It doesn't matter if your bra falls off, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you're just being honest and opening your heart, then the audience are going to go with it. They're going to love you no matter what, you know? Yeah, great. Uh, right, um, getting a bit of pressure now from Adam. Uh, he says, Sorry, can Adam. we? No, no, no. Uh, can we get a little snippet of the Pharaoh's story from you? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you can. Do you... Take it away. What? Does he want me to do that? Okay. Well, that's what he said on this screen here, so okay. I'm just doing as me told. Okay, uh, okay. Strange as it seems, there's been a run of crazy dreams And a man who can interpret could go far Could become a star Well done. Thank you very much, Jenna. And apparently Adam said it was the fans that asked, not him. Oh. So there you go. Right then, uh, we'll let you go very, very soon uh, and let people get more excited for this amazing concert that's going to be happening. But of course, VE Day is tomorrow, quite a historic day. How will you be celebrating it? And uh, will you be doing it? Uh, and she will do it. Are you doing any lives? Have you done any lives online or anything? 
I'm not, I haven't done any lives online. It's kind of something that I, I just haven't done. I've done a few private, I did, I had a concert in Singapore the other day. Um, wow. A couple of friends of mine, I think they're watching actually at the moment, a couple of friends of mine were meant to be getting married last Friday. Um, and obviously the wedding couldn't happen. So we had a little bit of a party and I did a little private concert for them. Um, and I'm not really doing any lives. I might do some soon, who knows, who knows. But I'm kind of letting all these little things come out. You know, there was a, a We Will Rock You one came out the other day. Joseph yeah. was obviously about to come out, so that's really exciting. So no, but I'm going to be celebrating it. Where I live, I live in a bit of a gated community. Um, and we have, um, there's a good friend of mine who lives just around the back and he's on a top balcony. Um, and he used to be a guitarist in Mamma Mia in town. And basically him and his wife get on the balcony and they do a little half hour jazz set. And tomorrow wow. they're going to do a little VE concert. Um, and we're going to sit isolated, obviously on the grounds, everybody in their little separate space and have a little bit of a picnic here because it's all private. So it's going to be really lovely, actually. That, that sounds that. amazing. I think you should yeah. live stream that. Yeah, I might do, actually. I might put a bit of live stream up on that and you can all watch. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, now, that is it. Uh, thank you very much, Jenna. It's been uh, absolutely brilliant chatting to you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Uh, if you do want to get the, her album, which is now available, you can log on to the website, jennaleejames.com. You can download it from there. Uh, alternatively, visit any streaming site, YouTube, Spotify, uh, anything like that, and get it downloaded uh, through those means or just listen to it over and over again and get those players up. Yeah, is that what yeah. we want? <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Jenna. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully, uh, well, we will see you in the Joseph concert. And um, thank you for asking all the, uh, answering all the questions. Thank you so much to everybody. And thank you to you, Adam. And stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Jenna. Take care. And of course, it is for charities. If you do want to donate, you can do the details are on the bottom of the screen right now. Uh, is of course, uh, you can go to justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Joseph Dream Concert. I've been Adam Smith. I'll be back with you Tuesday afternoon. Uh, at two o'clock to be speaking uh, and putting your questions to Zoe Silas. If you've got any for her, uh, please get them in right now by commenting or messaging through Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. We would love to hear from you and we'll get them to her on Tuesday. Have a safe weekend. Stay at home. Stay well. See you Tuesday. Ciao.